Mayor Oberhäuser, Military Tribunal 1 has found and adjudged you guilty of war crimes and crimes against humanity as charged under the indictment heretofore filed against you. For your said crimes on which you have been and now stand convicted, Military Tribunal 1 sentences you, Werther Oberhäuser, to imprisonment for a term of 20 years to be served at such prison or prisons or other appropriate place of confinement as shall be determined by competent authority. The officer of the guard will remove the defendant where to go. Previously, we saw that Erta Oberhäuser grew up in Dusseldorf where she studied medicine. She went to work at Ravensbrück concentration camp where she participated in criminal forced experiments on prisoners. In some cases, the prisoners suffered life-changing injuries or were murdered by Oberhäuser or other medical staff once their experimental use was over. Oberhäuser was taken prisoner on the 8th of May 1945 and put on trial at the Nuremberg subsequent doctor's trial. On the 20th of August 1947, Oberhäuser was sentenced to 20 years in prison. The sentence was reduced to 10 years in 1951, and on the 4th of April 1952, Oberhäuser was released from the Landsberg prison for good behaviour. As she came onto the job market in 1952, she was recognised as a late returnee. That is to say, someone who was a refugee from those former parts of Germany now occupied by the Soviet Union. This meant that she had certain privileges over other job seekers in the Federal Ministry of Labour. After her release from prison, Oberhäuser settled down as a general practitioner in Stocksee near Neumünster in the north of Germany and at the same time worked at the Johanna Heilstatter Clinic in Plön as a paediatrician. She was recognised and reported in 1956 by a survivor from the Ravensbrück concentration camp. After allegations against her became known, she was sacked from the Johanniter Sanatorium. At the same time, the Kiel Public Prosecutor's Office opened proceedings against Oberhäuser on suspicion of a criminal offence, which, however, was discontinued in 1957 on the grounds that Oberhäuser could not be punished twice for the same offence. It would appear that files from the American trial at Nuremberg had not been transferred to the German authorities. As Oberhäuser had been sacked, she needed to concentrate on her private medical practice. It is, of course, quite normal for a doctor to have a private medical practice and work in a clinic somewhere else. Nothing unusual about that. Amid protests from former Ravensburg prisoners in Germany, the Daily Express had published an article on the 4th of March 1958 regarding the case of her Oberhäuser. The article was seen by Dr. M. H. Armstrong Davison, Davison brought the case of the reinstatement of Oberhäuser's medical license and subsequent return to practice to the attention of the British Medical Association, the BMA. The BMA, in turn, put pressure on the German authority to revoke Oberhäuser's medical practitioner's license. Herta Oberhäuser was summoned to the High Court in Schleswig. Minister of the Interior, Helmut Lemke, in August 1958 revoked her license and as a result, Oberhäuser's practice at Stocksee was to be closed. Lemke was able to do so on the grounds that Oberhäuser was in violation of the Hippocratic Oath, having carried out, and I quote his words, barbarous, pseudo-medical, murderous assaults on helpless, innocent people. Oberhäuser lodged an appeal. Her medical practice, meanwhile, was allowed to remain open during the appeal process. On the 9th of November 1960, Oberhäuser's appeal was heard. This was rejected on the 4th of December 1960. Oberhäuser furthermore had costs awarded against her. In May 1965, she left Stockse and moved to Bad Honnef. Although she would never again practice medicine, it appears as though Oberhäuser was employed at a pharmaceutical laboratory in 1967.
This is Linz am Rhein, an absolutely charming town on the Rhine to the south of Bonn. Oberhäuser retired here to a nursing home. On the 24th of January 1978, she died here, aged only 66. How can we explain the movements of Oberhäuser after the war? This is my theory and I could be completely wrong. She was born in Cologne and grew up in Dusseldorf where she started work, so maybe she saw this as her home area. She went to Ravensbrück for career reasons. After she was released from prison, she moved to near the Danish border in Schleswig-Holstein. I think that this could have been the furthest she could go where people might not know her. After all, she'd been imprisoned in Bavaria. As it happened, it didn't do her much good, as by this time the German press was happy to expose any former Nazis in their midst. Once she was unable to work there, she returned to her base, possibly as what she thought was her Heimat, that is to say, the Rhine River. As one travelled south from Cologne, there were a number of very attractive towns with the backdrop of the mighty river. Bad Godesberg, Bad Honef, Remagen, Linz am Rhein, amongst others. This video was shot from the top of the Erpelele, which is the volcanic outcrop above the former bridge at Remagen. Not only is it a very attractive area, but it also has a large amount of companies working in the pharmaceutical sector, and maybe she was able to get work here using connections made from before her days at Ravensburg. That's just conjecture. I don't know. I'd also like to say a word about sources. There's a huge amount of material on Nazi pseudo-medical experiments, including trial records, above all the Nuremberg doctor's trial. I've been very selective in the victims that I've quoted. There are many more, including those who gave evidence at the trial, and therefore I apologise for missing out some important pieces of testimony. However, I might address the life stories of one or two of the Polish victims in the future. I hope you found that interesting. I upload every Friday at 20 hundred hours my time. I'm based in Germany and in Poland. And in the meantime though, I would suggest that you now have a look at some of the films I've done on Ravensbrück, which you can find at the end of this video. So please just click on the link.